You're a fucking human metronome. It's truly <laughs> s- a, something to behold. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. It's really amazing. It's like you're, you're half hand and half machine. It's pretty <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Way Too Broad, a place for friends to talk about things they're really, really ridiculously excited about. I'm Hannah, and these are my co-hosts, Ben, who's graduating this weekend, and Aaron. Woo! 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 Hi, Ben. Hi, sorry, it's blowing my nose. Hi, Ben, future <laughs> undergrad, gross. <laughs> Sound the buzzer. <laughs> Knowing look at Ben. And uh, hi, Aaron. <laughs> Sound the buzzer, Ben. Oh. <laughs> that was labored. Hi, Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Congratulations, Ben. Thank you. Ben, how did your last exam go? I got Do the best feel? grade in the class. You fucking did. Fucking yes. Woo. Fuck you're yeah, so Ben. smart. So annoying. Ben, you're great. I've always said that about you. When you were born, I was like, that kid's going to get the best grade in his fucking class. That's what I said. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, I said that to you. How old yeah. were we? Seven. Boy, we knew what was up. <laughs> we knew what grades were and everything. That's right. Yep. And we're- I was using the word fucking at seven, so that's me. <laughs> that's what I'm, just things about me. <laughs> Something about me at seven. Uh, um, when Six Flags, Ben? Uh, that was this past Saturday, but I didn't go because I was sick. Oh, fuck. Are you going to reschedge? No, it was like a, a school thing. Like the school organized discount tickets. There's a bus there. But when's Disney? That is in two weeks. Who's, who's fucking going to fucking Disney right now? Uh, Kylie, myself... Uh, our friends Jonathan and Kyle, who we went to Japan with, uh, and Jonathan's family. Look, that looking forward cool. to that. I won't be sick. We can play games. What are you sick with? Just a cold. Okay. Jonathan and Kyle live in California, so we don't get to see them that often, too. So it's it's going to be fun. Are they going to be anywhere near you when you move to Cali? No, they're in uh, Mountain View, Northern California. Okay. But... Closer we'll be in the same be. time zone. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah, it'll be like, true. it's like $100 to fly there around trip if we were feel like going up for a weekend or they feel like coming down for a weekend or anything. It's not that. Do you drive on that PCH to get there? I don't, oh, what is, what is that? Pacific Coast Highway? You said that like I was a dumb shit idiot. Yeah, you I'm were. hoping that I was right, but you came you worse in your class about highways. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it's supposed to be very pretty. And maybe we will. It's a long I drive, went, though. I went to California for the first time last year, and I noticed something that nobody had ever noticed, which is California is really big. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Wow, is that true? Yeah. <laughs> I noticed it for the first time. <laughs> Hannah, we should write a fucking book, yo. It'll be called Things That Are Bigger Than You Notice. <laughs> <laughs> Things we, we noticed, noticed for the first time were big before <laughs> anyone else. That's like the subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> Colon. <laughs> We've noticed for the first time these things are big. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hannah and uh, Aaron Brown. Yes. Comma. Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny that you're going to Disney... As, like, a graduation present, because as my graduation present, we went on a Disney cruise. Yeah. There's nothing That's that should be particularly hilarious. Disney-related about graduating, but there it is. Boy, last chance to feel like a kid again. <laughs> I guess so. Before the bills set in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you come back and there's that letter from the student loan company. Mm-hmm. I had to do exit counseling to get my diploma. 
Whoa, what's that mean? You, like, decide on a payment plan. Uh, but I'm going to be deferring all my loans while I'm in grad school anyway, so. Mm. Hashtag fuck it, am I right? Yeah, you guys get right. it. Right. Yeah, totes, totes. <laughs> to totes. We need to do a big, huge shout out again. Oh my gosh, yeah, we freaking do. To another brand new cousin. Oh, we just have another cousin. Can you guys believe it? It's been less than a year of podcasting and we've churned out two more cousins. <laughs> as a family. We're as nothing like a- if not prolific. <laughs> yes. <laughs> To our cousin Andy and his beautiful wife Candace and their um, wonderful son uh, Tristan also. They have a new addition to their family, little cousin Adeline. Adeline! Is that how you pronounce it? I wasn't sure. What do we think? I like Adeline. I like Adeline. Why don't um, Andy or Candace or Tristan, hey, why not? Email us if we're pronouncing it wrong. And shout outs to Rachel will definitely know also. And shout outs to Rachel, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, we love you so much. Congratulations. Yeah. So excited to meet little Adeline. Congratulations. When I first saw it, when dad texted us, tell me if you think this is disrespectful because I'll cut it out. But when I first saw it, when dad texted us about it, I thought it said Aladdin. <laughs> and I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> you just have Disney stuck in your head. I guess so. If that said Aladdin in hot take, I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, going to go ahead and call it that uh, Adeline is just going to get the best test in her class. So, there you oh. go. <laughs> then you Aaron haven't said that on every record. cousin. Well, yeah. Well, I'm actually getting better because I can now, like, it used to take me, like, seven years-ish to know. And now I know, like, right away. <laughs> um, Aaron, I finished reading the power, or listening to the power. You fucking did. That was fast. Kylie bought that the other day oh when we were at the bookstore. Oh, wow. Um, I Hannah, have beer on me. Oh, what's everybody drinking? Congratulations, Kylie. Um, I'm drinking decaf coffee and a milkshake that Henley Hen, Henley did not <laughs> rick, that Henry did not lick. Henley and Chroma. <laughs> <laughs> it was that thing I do, spoonerisms. Henley. It was Henley did yeah, not rick. lick. Yeah. <laughs> Henley did not rick. <laughs> God. Wait, what are you drinking? Water. <laughs> Decaf coffee and a milkshake that Henley didn't lick. <laughs> okay. okay. No, that Henley didn't rick. Sorry. <laughs> Pardon me. Rick. Okay. I am drinking a new beer that Ian got because he remembered that we were recording tonight. It's he's called... He's thoughtful. He's very thoughtful. And then, <laughs> and then I proceeded to fucking... I went to grab the be- a beer to to come in here, and he grabbed one at the same time. And I opened mine, and he wa- he was walking right over to me, and I put the <laughs> bottle opener right back where I found it and walked away as if he wasn't going to need it immediately after me. You are not thoughtful. I'm not thoughtful. <laughs> You're like, well, I've opened my beer. That's all that needs to happen tonight i was just like in my head it's like if you put it back where it came from then they'll know where to find it and that's thoughtful <laughs> they'll know where to find it how impersonal how impersonal like who lives in your house <laughs> them so okay it's <laughs> Um, it's an Oma Gang, Brewery Oma Gang beer, which is, uh, they're based in Cooperstown, New York, which is where Ian was born. Oh. So we've actually, he's visited their brewery a That's bunch of times. That's where the Baseball Hall of Fame is. Yes. I've been True. there. So, well, actually, we haven't been, I haven't been inside of it. I played a baseball game at Cooperstown Field once. Wow. wow. Yeah, Congratulations. Cool. Did you hit a home star? <laughs> no, but we won by a lot. Hey, cool! Wow. No, wait. That I always was my said, lot. It was like two to you zero. Know, Ben's baseball team <laughs> is gonna win by a lot at Cooperstown. <laughs> He's gonna come in first in the baseball game. <laughs> <laughs> um. So it's a sour. It's a pale sour ale. To finish oh. that thought. And. Please do finish your thoughts for the rest of the podcast. Just yeah, for you know, everyone. We were just talking about Aaron and I have both been doing a little bit of listening back to to past episodes and um 
we were talking about how like there are two things that happen to us fairly regularly. The first one is that Aaron had mentioned. Well, do you want to describe it? I'm totally stealing your story that you told me. Oh, sure. It just you know. I I picked like a I was on a road trip again and picked like a rando episode like an older one, and didn't don't remember hardly any of it and some somebody would say something and I would have a thought, and then I would in the recording say it verbatim as oh, I was really? thinking and it wasn't that I remembered saying it it was just like you're the I'm same like, person oh, in the same situation <laughs> I'm the same person in the same situation yeah right <laughs> <laughs> and. And then the other thing is um, hearing yourself start a thought and knowing where you meant to go with it and realizing that you never, ever got there. Yep. Oh, God. And just being like, oops. <laughs> That's happened to me while I've, listened, while I've listened to past episodes. Yeah, totally. It makes me probably, mad at myself. Probably for more for you because we freaking interrupt you all the same <laughs> time, but we have less of an excuse. <laughs> so what do you think of the power? Um, I liked it. I had to go back and, and um, <laughs> re-listen to certain parts because um, I was working while I was listening oh, to it. Yeah. And so I kept on, like, tuning it out and then realizing I didn't know what was happening and yeah. going back a chapter. Yeah. But um, I think I gathered pretty much the whole deal, and I thought I, I thought it was really interesting. I actually liked the ending a lot and mm. the way that they kind of framed it. Um. Uh, I also got it for my mom for her birthday. Oh, great. Cool. Yeah. Uh, hi, Aunt, Aunt Brown. Are they still listening? Yeah. I think so. Oh, great. It's hard to know. Not getting any emails and all that, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remind me we have an email at the end, too, and they put that on the outline. Oh, great. Cool. Well, you know, I, I was talking to Sarah, um, about it and about the ending and, she reminded me that it's an origin story too, which makes a lot yeah. of sense as to why the ending is how it is. But right, yeah, it's kind of a mind fuck, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, good book. It's really interesting. It's really interesting how, through the course of the story, um, the way that people, not just like think, not just like act towards each other, but the way that they think about the way that the the, the uh, that women think about men and vice versa, like changes like yes. only over a few years like yeah. not over decades or generations just right. like you know hiding like a man like you know that kind of like it's right. just it's just really interesting yeah totes i have a, an upfront thing sup sup queer eye was never one of our obsessions right we just talked about it a few weeks ago i it was Aaron. mine it was it's yours mine. it was yours yeah, okay that's what mine. i thought because uh, we we watched the first two episodes the past two days, Kylie and I, and it's so, so, so good. I damn. love it. It's just, yeah, <laughs> <damn>. <laughs> And then oh, he got married I'd... to her. Yes, he got married to her again yeah. just this weekend. Yeah, that was, I, it's so good. I really want to rewatch it. I so do, inclusive, what do you think? so, like, they're so good at being, like, it, critical without being judgmental mm-hmm. and yes. like and just and i love that they included in that first one when um when tom, when tom asked like who's the husband and who's the wife mm-hmm. to the two guys that were married well i mean they're not married but about the guy and his husband mm-hmm. and they like left in the conversation where they kind of explained that like that's a little sexist and like that's not how relationships have to be like, mm-hmm. everyone has masculinity and femininity, and there's enough to be a husband and a wife. I was just like, that's a good, like, they didn't, they handled that situation really well. Yeah. You know? And like, Jonathan was back there and was like, let's unpack this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. just, it's a good, it's just a good thing. I don't know if I mentioned this at the time, but I'll say it again if I did. If you should follow them all on Instagram, if you're on Instagram. Because they are gorgeous and post selfies of themselves or whatever. But then, like, if you look in the comments, like, all the other Queer Eyes guys will, all the other Fab Five will will be commenting, like, the sweetest comment you've ever Aww. seen. Like, they Aww. just love each other. Aww. And they, like, retweet, repost their others. Like, you know, like, Tan is writing a memoir. And, like, all the others posted about it. And was like, oh, my God, Tanny, I love you. I can't wait to read this. Like, they just, like 
truly just love and support one another. Aww. Do they, are the rest of the episodes all in Georgia also? Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's all in Georgia? Gotcha. Yeah. Georgia. Georgia. <laughs> what song is that? Georgia! What song is that? <laughs> wow. Han- Hannah sings Georgia. <laughs> you should come up with an album. <laughs> After we you finish our book. Home to me. Yeah. Um, but what it... So when I was spilling beer on myself then, what did you say about Kylie? She bought that book too? Yeah, she did. We were at the bookstore yesterday and she Heck bought yeah. it. yeah. Cool. Heck yeah. I had a couple more upfront things. Yep. I wanted to tell the listeners that Hannah's outfit looks like a really fabulous pirate. Just, I don't know what the bottom looks like. It probably doesn't when the, the bottom is combined. Well, just but- like cut off jeans and a peg leg. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true for the listener uh, that's really funny i just had this visual of your little peg leg sticking out under your table <laughs> but she has like a red bandana and like a white and black striped like pirate shirt it's really great it's i like it i think it's a shirt it's gorgeous. Well, no, yeah. I think it is a... Ben, what do you think? Is it a normal shirt? Is it, is it pi- pirate-esque? It's pirate-esque, for sure. Thank you. For sure. For sure. For okay. sure. Okay. I love it. The earrings, it's beautiful. You're beautiful. The second upset thing <laughs> was I got this really... I was in Charleston this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. A couple things about that. The first thing, unrelated to what I meant to say, is that... My our friend Sarah and I were out uh, in Charleston, kind of bar hopping a bit, and mm-hmm. we were at this place that had it. We were texting Hannah the whole time. Actually, yeah. there was this place with like a million cocktails, and we were like, "I wish you could just do a cocktail flight." And then we laughed at the absurdity of that. But then, like the next bar we went to, well, the next next bar we went to had a <laughs> cocktail flight. It was this. Oh rum wow. Bar. Yeah, it was this rum bar, which had the most amazing cocktails ever. I love rum. Um, and they had a rum flight where you got three cocktails. You got a dark and stormy with their, like, house-made ginger syrup, which was really fucking mm-hmm. gingery and spicy. You mm-hmm. got a uh, rum punch, and you got a painkiller. And it was just, like, it was, like, 12 bucks. What's a painkiller? It's, um, v- uh, rum and <laughs> co- <laughs> and coconut cream. And Ugh. it might have orange. Did you say you? Yeah, I'm out at coconut. Oh, it's dull, freaking, <laughs> fucking licious. I'll take and your word for it. It has other juices, pineapple juice, maybe orange juice, that sort of thing. So <coughs> anyway, but then we did we did a lot of outside things, and I was we went to, including going to the beach, and I was very diligent about my sunscreen. <laughs> but then we were fishing on the pier all day, mm. and I was not. I didn't put any sunscreen on my arms, and but I was wearing a shirt that I kind of rolled up the sleeves a little bit, so I got this really intense farmer's, farmer's tan, tan. <laughs> sunburn, um, but the worst part was like it started up kind of high mm. and was really uneven on each side because my <laughs> sleeves were kind of rolled up differently, <laughs> and I was showing Molly, it like starts like right almost at my armpit. <laughs> and I was showing Molly, and she was like, "You know what you need is Hannah's shoulder shirt <laughs> to like cover your arms and just give your shoulders some sun." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would do it. So, <laughs> Hannah, well, I, need to, I need to get a uh, get a shirt and roll the sleeves up and go walk around outside. Uh, yeah, we can trade shirts and and even out our suntans. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the great suggestion, Molly. Shout outs to Molly. Yeah, I thought that was very funny. <laughs> um, any other upfront stuff? What's on your outline? <laughs> you tell I mean, us. You're driving this fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> Whose freaking podcast is this? We already did uh, everything I have on my outline. Except I wanted to tell you another thing that's kind of piratey about me right now is that I haven't showered in two days. <laughs> oh, nice. only two? <laughs> Congrats. Well, yeah, but it's like a, a, t- a pirate that just set out, you know. 
I showered last on Saturday. Get on my level. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, usually, I told you, usually my hair gets too greasy and I can't do it. Oh, yeah. But I've been having, as I also told you, I've been having so much trouble getting to sleep on time for oh, no yeah. good reason that um, I just have been, like, not getting up early enough to shower. And then also, there's been all this fucking road... It's, like, back to the fucking Stone Age um, in the... Uh, Did you just the- smack your mic? You <laughs> <laughs> sounded a gong. <laughs> back to the Stone Age. <laughs> Out on the road behind our house, which is a main road that lots Did of cars Did they have roads on. in the Stone Age? <laughs> Stone roads. No, they don't. That's the whole point. They've, I'm sorry. They've unpaved the road. It's it's just oh. a dirt road now. It's so and for like a long time it was closed. So like okay, <clears throat> they they put out a notice that the road was going to be closed <laughs> for one day. I just love when people start to say something and immediately <laughs> cough. It's like one of my favorite things. It's like all right. <clears throat> <laughs> One time, one time Sarah started a story and she was like, she was like, I have a story to tell you. Hold on. And then she took a big bite of burrito. And I was like, <laughs> why am I holding on? Anyway. <laughs> so they put up like a notice that that road was going to be closed for one day. It was like local traffic only, which was like fine. And then they, and then they, um, they just randomly did a second day and didn't tell anybody. And then on the second day, they accidentally broke a, a, a water main um, while they were working near like the sewage line, apparently. So everybody's water turned brown for a while and got very Ew. low. So that was another reason that I was avoiding the shower for a couple of days. And then <clears throat> they kept it closed uh, like yesterday and now it's open but it's it's like three quarters a dirt road because they're repaving it but like no. who the fuck looked at that job and was like oh yeah this is gonna take us one day like it's like a, it's like a half a mile of road <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking stupid they're fucking stupid i don't have an elaborate anecdote justifying why i haven't bathed since saturday other than <laughs> i don't really like to take showers so i don't <laughs> nice. that's also fine yeah that honestly was not really about why I didn't shower. It's just a big frustration in my life right now. That's gross. Yeah. You're you gross. Showered. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. nasty, the water turning brown. I was also, like, taking gulps of my brown milkshake when you said that. <laughs> it was a little off-putting. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry that I threw you off <laughs> <laughs> with my life. So, I'm up first. Congratulations. I need to just take the numbers off of here. I never, ever change them anymore. What numbers? The numbers where it says Obsession 1, Obsession 2, and Obsession 3. I always just move the things around. Okay. So, my obsession is a little bit silly. I didn't even bring any in here. Um, do you guys know uh, Crazy Aaron's thinking putty? Like Crazy E-R-I-N's thinking putty? No. Uh, yes, I do, because I saw you buy it. Is it that magnetic stuff that that somebody got on Henry <laughs> at my house? <laughs> uh, well, that was not magnetic, but yes, it is. Oh, is it, was, it was like sparkly putty. Yeah, yeah. I have that one. Um... Yeah, we were just talking about that today because (laughs) so the first I think it was the first one that I bought. So if you guys if anybody listening doesn't know what Crazy Aaron's Thinking Putty is, just Google it. It's like uh, it's just like this stuff. It comes in all different like colors and different like tricks it can do. But it's just like putty that you can use with your hands. (laughs) You can train it. It's like there's like thermosensitive ones and there's ones that glow under black light and there's ones that glow in the dark. Um, there's one that said stick to your dog's leg. And so, so about that. This, so this, um, <laughs> so there's like two great stories here. One of them's not so great, the one with you, Aaron, but, but, oh. uh, 
I brought this down because the thing about this putty is that it's non-toxic. It's it's made in the USA. It's like basically like silicone, uh, like a form of silicone. So it's very like safe. Like one time Ian caught me putting some in my mouth just to like get a bite mark in it. <laughs> <laughs> life with you is a never ending adventure yeah and he like he was like you can't do that and then i was like prove it and he you're did like it's Googling. no magnet <laughs> right i was like it's safe and plus i've done it before and he was like i'm gonna google it so he looked it up and it turns out that it was probably fine so he had to like come back this is rare honestly usually he's very right but he had to come back and be like it's probably fine, but it's still gross, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what did the other people who live in your house say? What did they say? <laughs> they said it was fine, <laughs> but he wouldn't listen to them. <laughs> so, That's so, a really good point. That the internet is kind of the they that everyone lives with. <laughs> That's true. If we That's... really break this down, we could write some sort of book that like talks about <laughs> living with people, but really, when you analyze it, you're like, oh, it's a narrative about our connected technological life. It can be, it can be called Things About Life We Just Noticed for the First Time. <laughs> Colon. <Ever. Yeah. laughs> Colon, the internet really is the day, isn't it? By Hannah and Aaron Brown, comma, cousins. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought some of this down to Aaron and Molly's house we, we, when we stayed there last Thanksgiving. And I brought the, and uh, I let uh, our brother Lucas play with it. And he was doing this thing, which is one of the cool things that it can do, where you pull it apart really fast and instead of stretching like it normally does, if you pull it fast enough, it'll like snap um, apart. And that's really cool. But one time he pulled it so fast that it snapped in two places and the middle section flew into Henry's bed. Okay. And so but I don't think we knew that's where it went. No, we didn't. I think I think I saw it break, but I didn't see where it went. And. I didn't see how much it was, so I thought that a little piece had come off. And what maybe could get somewhere, but I figured it would turn up because like a lot of surfaces it can land on. It won't actually make a mess on like if it, if it landed anywhere on your floor or your table, it would have been like easy to pick up. Totes, but, totes. But it didn't. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so then the way we discovered it was later when uh, you found it on Henry's leg, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, he was like being a little weird. And which he just is in general. And then I looked and there was stuff on his like when he like hurts or is like feeling weird. He doesn't do normal dog things. I would assume or normal dog things. He's just like a little weird. So mm. I was like, something's wrong with Henry. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, something's on my leg, mom. <laughs> so it was totally fine. It was just oh. amusing. Poor Henry. I'm sorry, Henry. No, oh, he's fine. Sorry to you guys for having to get that stuff off his leg. Yeah, it was... So. We just let it do its thing. <laughs> it's not toxic. We caught him putting it in his mouth, and he was like, I just want bite marks in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, look it up, it's safe. Yeah. And then they we told went me looking. so. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, then this other thing happened. So yes, we bought some, we bought some little samples of it. So now they sell it in little, like little, little tins. Like it used to come in just big ones. And so we were, um, visiting my parents this weekend and we stopped at this place that had them. And I, and I asked Ian if he could buy us some, cause you always want to see like what the, what they actually look like inside all the different colors and stuff, but they're like 15 or 20 bucks each for the big ones. So mm. So I was like, this is cool. I want to get some of these. So we got them and they were really fun and cool. And one of them I was extremely impressed with. So the next time that we went by a place that sold it, I bought a big one of those. So now we have like four of them in our house and I take the little ones with me everywhere. Um, oh, and so, cool. Yeah, I've been like, like if they've been like a, a nice, like they're a really, really great stress relief thing at work. Like I don't want to start a collection on my desk because I don't have like room for it. But I totally would, I, I totally could see myself being that person who just has like a whole collection of them at their desk. Um, and I just think they're neat. But the big one that we bought the other day, I uh, I kept at home 
And earlier tonight, Ian was playing with it because he also enjoys it. And um, I was just sitting there watching TV and I, I saw him put something behind something black behind his knee out of the corner of my eye. And I was like, is that the putty? No. What was that? And I like asked him what it was and he didn't really acknowledge me. And then like a couple minutes later, he was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. He, he was like, I totally miscalculated how much hair there was behind my knee. Oh, oh God. <laughs> That's a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so he pulled off as much of it as he could, and then he was going to get the rest off with rubbing alcohol, and then I um, got mad at him because he, he had so much left on his knee that I didn't mm-hmm. want to waste it. So I made him let me pick off as much as I could before <laughs> before he did that, <laughs> oh which actually God. caused him a great deal of pain. So um, that sucks. But uh, what what about this one that you really liked? What about it? It's called Super did you like? Scarab, and it's um and it's like a Ben. You saw it. it uh, yeah, it's like that. You know that color that Toyotas are sometimes. Where they're like purple but also green and from a different angle. Like they change with the light, the color mm, of them. No. Or like a scarab beetle. Which yeah, is like a scarab beetle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Named after. The, it's like that. So it's like if you, yeah, if you look at it from a certain, like it's, it could be like green or purple or yellow depending on what angle you're looking at it from. And it's just very shiny and fun to look at. Like kind of like oil slicky. I find that sometimes it's like a little green with like ginger like hairs in it as well. <laughs> I've noticed that recently, very recently. <laughs> <laughs> That's so unfortunate. What an all around unfortunate story. Unfortunate for him, unfortunate for you, unfortunate for the putty. Yeah. Uh, most of all. Does the does that putty ever like you know how silly putty would leave a kind of like not sticky feeling on your fingers but like like a feeling like there was a patina of something on your hands after you touched it do you ever get that with this putty not with this putty that's part of why i like it and it doesn't smell like anything either hmm. which is another big problem for me so like if so like in general unless you're talking about things that are like furry or hairy like dog beds or dog legs or human that legs that putty no <laughs> Um, it's, it's, uh, it do- it's more apt to stick to itself than it is to stick to you. And that includes like, just kind of like the little bitty residue. It really doesn't do that. Or if it does, like you can, it's thick enough that you can see it and you can get it off. It doesn't like leave that like feeling on your mm-hmm. hands. And it also, like I said, it doesn't have any, basically any smell at all. Because mom has this stuff that she uses that I really like the feel of it, but it's so smelly. In like, it's, and it's scented. Like it smells. It's supposed to smell good, but it smells so much. Hmm. And then it's either that or it smells like chemicals, and that's gross too. This yeah. one just doesn't smell like anything. So I like it. Dope. That's pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a great like stocking stuffer thing. For all the hand fidgeters I know out there. Yes, definitely. And especially those little ones, because you can, like, really get away with palming those, you know, uh, and you don't have to, like, separate it. from. You can, like, just, like, stick the tin in your pocket and carry it around, and it's just, like, a really nice, like, soothing thing. Yeah. Highly recommend. Cool. Chill, chill. That's about the most I'm going to be able to talk about putty, I think. Um, Aaron, you're up next. Cool. I have a short one too. Um, my I was feeling kind of obsessed with like spring things and just having a really nice like springy time, but it actually just started raining. I think probably for the rest of the week, so that okay. kind of put a damper mm-hmm. on my spring. I have like all these like springy weekend plans, but anyway, an exciting thing that is happening this spring for the first time is that Molly and I have joined a new CSA that Mm. we have been really enjoying, and that's going to be my obsession this week. Um, This is our second week. It's uh, So the CSA that we had before, so for people who are listening who don't know what a CSA is, it stands for Community Supported Agriculture. Mm. And I live in North Carolina, which is a huge agriculture state. We just have a shit ton of farmers (laughs) and farms, and I live in a really hippie, hipster pocket of... North Carolina, 
and we have a ton of of little family farms and independent farms just throw a stone and hit like 10 of them <laughs> but don't throw stones at your local farmers They're how would a stone just one stone <laughs> Hit ten farms. Because they're just wondering. so many farms, Ben. <laughs> what, did you throw the stone really hard? Yeah, does uh, yeah, it go it, through the farms? Well, it it. Are you damaging something. property? It hit something and then splintered into ten stones and then oh. ricocheted. It was like stone shrapnel. That makes sense. Onto ten farms. <laughs> to give you an idea of like farms, just in like our little radius, there is in addition to like several vegetable farms, there's. And even meat farms. There's um, this farm called Blue Whistler Farm, which which raises rabbits for meat, which is rabbits? really interesting because they're really um, they're like really sustainable for. I think they're the least amount of water per meat pound or something. That was they sell that's, dehydrated that's... rabbits. <laughs> 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 like it takes the out of all the animals, it takes less water to raise the meat. For a rabbit. Oh. Raise yeah. the meat. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm totally butchering this. Anyway, so we have a lot of farm options. We... Butchering it! <laughs> 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 oh. uh, last year, we're using this, this cool CSA that delivers to your door, and that had a cool premise where it would go, it was like an quote-unquote ugly produce mm. CSA. And they would collect the produce from local farmers that they didn't feel like they could sell based on their appearance mm-hmm. of the vegetables, not the farmers. And <laughs> they would um, just ship. They would just ship that to your door. And so that was pretty good. Um, that made me feel good about it, and not guilty if I like didn't get to something and it went into the compost or whatever. Mm-hmm. But this year we're using. A brand new CSA. It's not brand new. It's brand new to us. This really cool CSA. It's called Transplanting Traditions. And it's a farm that is run and operated by refugees from Burma. And they... It was kind of started as, like, um, a place where they could, like, grow vegetables that were familiar to them. And um, that they were used to from their home. And also, like, raise... You know, kind of have extra money. And so we are getting, you can kind of, like, choose your options. You can choose to, like, get, like, as many, so they grow um, traditional Chinese vegetables as well as things that we're more used to. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of choose what you want. You can choose to get, like, max, max, max Asian vegetables, or you can choose, like, some Asian vegetables and some things I'm used to, or you can choose to do, like, please, just things I'm used to. And we (laughs) chose the middle of the road. For this one, just to see kind of what it's like and how we like it. And so far, it's it's totally rad. We're getting, like, when we signed up for a whole share, which is, like, for four people or two vegetable lovers. So we're just, like, getting a fuck ton of vegetables. But it's all, like, really great stuff. Like, bok choy and or, like, Chinese cabbage and cilantro and um, kale and all sorts of, like, really delicious strawberries and we also sign up for eggs, so we're getting 12 eggs every week, and they're, like, just delicious and, like, golden. Um, but it's really fun. It's it's. I'm excited to get kind of more uh, things later in the season that, like, I haven't really seen or cooked with before and try to figure out, like, what to do with, it, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, I love bok choy. I really, and uh, Asian broccoli, Rob, I really enjoyed mm-hmm. the phrase, we also signed up for eggs. <laughs> uh, it's bad when you don't sign up for eggs but still get eggs <laughs> and that's been it's been kind of fun too like we get it on friday and it's really convenient there's a pickup place downtown so molly um is i don't we haven't mentioned this on pod before but she's actually in code school mm. and it's right across from where i work and we both are downtown so we walk together up to Main Street and pick up our CSA together. Cute. In the middle of the day on Friday. That's so nice. Yeah. So it's hella convenient. But it's been fun. So we get it on Friday and then we have like a whole weekend and week to like, it's like a big puzzle piece of like, okay, we have all these vegetables. We have to like eat as much as we can 
in each dish. Because <laughs> we're going to get a whole lot more on Friday. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's fun. I like it. This is cool. Cool. Yeah. I'm just looking at oh, the website. Yeah, and we have the same farmer through the whole thing. So our farmer's oh, that's name. Cute. Yeah, our farmer's name is Ha Na, and she has huh. she and her husband have three grown children who all live in the triangle, and they just love farming for transplanting traditions. And she is the one who grows and you know puts together all of our vegetables. And there's like a potluck at the end of the season, and we can like meet her if we wanted to. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. They it's grow so neat. many things. Yeah. Why don't you name some things off that you see there? Well, I just got to the regular old vegetables. Okra, cauliflower, broccoli. But. <laughs> broccoli <yeah>. butt. Broccoli <laughs> butt. <laughs> broccoli Rob. <laughs> they, 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 uh, they, they make Swiss chard. Um, red Russian kale. They make edible flower. They grow edible flowers like nasturtiums. Red clover and hoop house. They make all kinds of uh, herbs. I don't know why I keep saying make. Yeah, I was just going to say that. (laughs) (laughs) They make all kinds of eggplants. That's the other incredible thing about them is that they don't grow it. They actually, like, make it all by hand, which I think is pretty unique. They they make watermelon radish. Um, What is that? That's just two different things. (laughs) Oh, it's like a it's like a radish that has like a red inside, yeah, and a green oh. outside. Well, we got little turnips, and Molly made pickles out of them. There's this one that says lettuce, but it's red, so that's different. <laughs> Another great thing that I appreciate is that when we go to pick it up, there's a swap box. So I guess like both they bring extra stuff from the farm, and people who are picking up their CSAs. Can if they like don't want something, they can swap it out for something else, which is good because like the first week we got this huge head of lettuce, hmm. which is like good. You're like excited about it for like the first night when you make a gigantic fucking salad, but then that's used like three leaves mm-hmm. and you still have five million D left, mm-hmm. and you're like, what the fuck else are you gonna do with lettuce other than eat a fucking salad? Mm. Do you want to hear some more vegetables they make? Yeah. Okay. Bitter melon. <laughs> they. Make uh, <laughs> Kermit eggplants, which are green and white. <laughs> they make long beans, which are as long as the child in the picture. Wow. Uh, something called Lufa, Luffa, L-U-F-F-A, which seems to grow from a vine, um, but it's like a big gourdish looking thing. Um, they make ridge gourd, uh, snake gourd. Tatsoi, which is a leafy vegetable of some kind. They make holy basil, <laughs> water spinach. <laughs> they make water gourds. I'm not doing it on purpose. And um, winged beans, which are cool. I like, part of me wants to take the leap and choose the, we're going to sign up again for the summer. Mm-hmm. Part of me wants to take the leap and do the, like, max traditional Chinese vegetables. But I'm a little afraid. What if I get like a box full of gourds and then I'm like, uh Just no. make a make a good stew. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's what I'll do. <laughs> Just make a good stew. That literally never occurred to me. Now you've got a stew going. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you got a stew going. <laughs> oh god. Molly and I are big CS people. Like, we also, in the past, have joined a CSF, which is a community-supported fishery. Oh, yeah. Because we're right by the coast, like you know. Not as coastal as you, Hannah, Mm-mm. but... Um, Only Hannah nobody's... apparently lives near the coast. Oh, nobody's yeah. as coastal <laughs> as me. Just Hannah. <laughs> Only Hannah, just her. <laughs> <laughs> And like, I don't live in one only, of the East Coast biggest ports or anything. Like, <laughs> like only Hannah being by the coast, we, this place would like go fish <laughs> and then come over to me. They didn't make and, <laughs> they and, and make fish. 
They <laughs> gave you the fish they made? They gave me the fish that they made. Wow. I remember that. Yeah. So we're just... So yes. I like things like that. Mm-hmm. Cool. Do you talk to your neighbors? No. Oh, good. Okay. Under no circumstances. Why? I don't know. I was just thinking, like, if you're big community supporters, maybe you talk to your neighbors. No, we've talked about this. I'm a terrible neighbor. I'm a great friend and family member and a friendly person, but I don't talk to my neighbors. Just... Not on principle. I just don't yeah. do it. No, I don't either. I don't. I just don't. And Ian, Ian is like, in general, is a lot more socially. Well, not a lot more. I'm pretty awkward, but like he is more socially awkward than me in like in like a party setting. But when it comes to the neighbors, he's been much more driven to, like, re- reach out and meet them. And, like, he Here- knows a lot of their names, and I do not. Here's my fucking deal. I've had many neighbor experiences where it'll be a man, and he'll be the type of person who talks to me more than I want to be talked to mm-hmm. and will trap me and not not pay attention to me when I say things like, okay, I gotta go, will yeah. just keep talking to me. And that happened to me happened to me uh, at the last place I li- or the place I lived before the last place I lived and it happened to me actually at this house and across the street neighbor mm. um and I just hate that yeah. <laughs> I really like when I'm home that's my palace yes. and it's time for me to like to be in my space and yes. not have someone in my face this oh, is nice <laughs> what a great song this is exactly <laughs> what i'm talking about yes this is exactly it this is my exact fear is that i'm afraid that they'll get too friendly and they'll think that and i actually doesn't like it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman honestly i've i I can't think of this ever actually happening which is weird that it's like exactly the same fear that i have and i can't remember it having happened to me but like even when i see it in movies where someone walks out of their house and their neighbor's like hey buddy how's it going and they want to just like have a Uh -uh. talk about their lives i'm like no 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 (laughs) I'm also, like, pretty secluded from my neighbors. Like, I have that long driveway, so I'm, mm. I'm kind of secluded from my across-the-street neighbors, and my one-side neighbor is kind of removed, and we're separated by a good bit of woods. And then the other neighbor is a lot closer, but in the summer, spring and summer, the fig trees grow in, and then you can't see them from our porch. So nice. that's fig actually trees? perfect. Yeah, fig trees. You have fig it's... trees, or they have fig trees? I have fig trees. You do? Oh, I love Am figs. Am I not allowed to have fig trees? No, I love ben? figs. That's exciting. They don't they haven't grown any figs. Oh. I don't know if they're like a male female thing or if the deer eat the little fig buds. Oh. But we fig have butts. fig butts. Fig but butts. We ha- yeah. <laughs> fig butts. Well, fig, it's well, like, fig butts. <laughs> well, it's like it's like a broccoli butt. <laughs> it's like a broccoli butt but a fig. <laughs> And maybe the deer are eating their little thick butts. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't been able to make any figs. <laughs> Brought that so, full circle. Oh yeah. my god. But anyway, it's just as I would like. But you know what? I think all my neighbors are on the same page except for the one. So the one who I was having a real problem with, this is really terrible and I'm so sad it happened, but his house burned down to the ground. Oh. He was fine. He and his wife were fine, so he hasn't been around. Oh, God. <laughs> no further comment. <laughs> <laughs> that problem was magically solved by fire. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm really sad it happened. That sounded insensitive, I, I, but I think it, it's working out for them okay. Like, I think good. they're getting, getting insurance, and they're building a new house and stuff like that. God, Somewhere that else? Or... No, in the same spot. And this is actually really funny because I'm a very unobservant person. And I have always said, I've always said that if I walked out of my house and the neighbor's house was gone, I would be like, I feel like there was something there. <laughs> and and their house was gone. <laughs> and I was driving in the car with Molly. We were pulling out. And she was like, look over there. And she points. And I'm like, looking. <laughs> I was like, what? And she's like, that house is gone. And I was like, oh, yeah, oh my god, it is. In your defense, that's not really a thing you're like ready. Like your eyes, I feel like your eyes aren't ready to notice that. I just, that's not something you expect at all. That's not how my brain works. I can't describe it to you, but I, 
do not pay attention to things if I'm I need to remind myself to pay attention to my surroundings. Like if I'm like, oh Molly mentioned she planted some flowers, remember to look at the mailbox when you drive in mm. today. I just like am so lost in my head thinking about shit that I like like or humming a song, maybe nothing is even going on <laughs> up there. <laughs> that I just like do not notice my surroundings. That's fair. I think that was you explained that pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and pick up on that not so subtle hint from hannah <laughs> well, you said that you couldn't explain it i just thought you explained oh. it pretty well oh thanks thanks <laughs> no need to elaborate any further <laughs> but it is ben's turn <laughs> oh my god ben yeah ben <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd hear your obsession again. <laughs> I have once again stolen mine from Kylie. Oh, hang on, oh, man! Just gotta let Aaron know that was a, a great one, Aaron. We'd love to hear about you supporting your community. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> but refusing to speak with your neighbors. <laughs> I don't refuse. I just, you know, don't elect. To. You just Molly... don't want them to get too familiar. Molly, who is also, I would say, I am a more, in general, sociable person, is much more likely and, in, in fact, more actively engaged with our neighbors, which is interesting. That is so interesting. To your, yeah, to your your yin and yang thing. It's, yeah. a, it's, a different, it's a different space. Yeah. I think it's a different comfort space, too. Like, I think Ian and Molly probably feel very comfortable in their home. Yeah. So are more maybe socially, you know. Anyway, we can break this down at another time. <laughs> I think you What's up, Ben? It pretty well. So. What's up, Ben slash Kylie? <laughs> Mine's a game called God of War. Oh boy! Familiar. Yeah, it's very. <laughs> Do you... <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> he says that a lot in the game. Yeah. Uh, oh. It's it, the newest game in the series that's been around for a while, and part of why I like it so much is because of how much of a departure it is from the older games. Mm-hmm. Which I, I haven't I also haven't played, but I know about them because Kylie was telling me a lot about them while I, while I was watching her play this one. Um because so the story in the old games is that uh there's this guy Kratos is a Spartan. Um and he's like a great warrior. And there's this whole thing where he ends up making a deal with Ares, the god of war, to help him like win a battle because he's, like, a commander, and ends up becoming, like, a servant to the god of war. Oh, that sounds Um, like a terrible plan. Yeah, and, (laughs) oh, well, it goes horribly right away, because he tricks him into killing his own daughter and wife. Oh, dang. Jesus Christ! Yeah, it's a dark game. Uh, And so his whole thing, like the other games, is that he wants to get revenge on Ares and all basically hates all gods. Because How of this. is one tricked into killing their wife and daughter? He uh, he m- moved them to this like village or something, and um, made Kratos basically r- burn down the entire village and kill everyone in it. Oh, no. And in addition to like telling him, to, I think he also like put him into some kind of rage where he couldn't even control himself, and so he, and then he uh, covered him with the ashes of his. Of his daughter and wife, so he's like God. he's got like white kind of, kind of white skin. He's and he's called in the other games like the ghost of Sparta, and it's because of it covered in his family's ashes. Gross. Yeah, it's fucked up. So by the end of those games, he's killed like all of the Greek gods, including Zeus, who he finds out is his father, and as a result, he oh, becomes perfect. a god. Oh, so he starts out this game as a god and he has a new wife and a new and a new son uh but it, it, right at the beginning like the beginning of the game right before the beginning of the game his wife is his wife died and the whole story of the game is that he wants he he and his son are trying to scatter her ashes at the highest mountain in all the realms that's like the main story of the game is they're trying to <laughs> scatter her ashes at the top of a mountain and which doesn't sound like it'll get into a lot of things but it does uh, but what I like so much about it is that the old games are like very much 
like quintessentially toxic masculinity because mm. it's like literally just about violence revenge killing and fucking mm. like he 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 goes to like aphrodite's like pleasure chamber and i think has sex with aphrodite or something in the other games like it's Dang. and her yeah it's just like about being a dude. violent dude warrior yeah exactly yeah Whereas this game, and they like, and the the creators of this game, because it's a new studio that made it, it's not the same people that made the old games, and they like purposely talk about how they tried to, they want to take this like well loved series, but take it in a different direction because they recognize that like, honestly, if the if the older games came out nowadays, I don't know if they'd even be as popular because they're so like toxically masculine. Yeah. Um. So instead, it's not. I mean, obviously, it's a violent game still, but it's not like about the violence. It's there's a real story and a real relationship growing between him and his son because before the son, before his wife died, he wasn't really much of a father. He was very absent, and like the game starts out with like he's trying to to train his son to be a warrior so that he can survive. And he d- refuses to tell him that he's a god, refuses to tell him that his son is a god as well, because he's the son of a god. Mm. Um, because he hates all gods and he doesn't want him to like live like that. So he's got he's like hiding a bunch of things from his son, um, and all he wants is just like to train him to be strong. And their their relationship grows a lot throughout it's it's being like a story of fatherhood and like coming of age kind of at the same time. Mm. And it's it's really sweet. Um what does it mean to be a god? What do you mean? Like, if that's something that you can hide from somebody about themselves. Oh, well, he's, he's like, a human. Like, he's humanoid. Okay. He ch- And apparently he chose to live like that. Like, he chose to live like a man. He And also, he left Greece. He, they're in... The, all, oh, all, like, all of this takes place in Scandinavia now. Or, like, that kind of realm. Like, all the, the gods that he does meet, which is only a few in this game, are all Norse gods. Like, he meets Odin's son... And so he, were the he, other games? They were all set in Greece. Yeah, because he's he's Spartan. So was he meeting Greek gods? Yeah, I guess you said that already. Yeah. Yeah, Zeus is his dad. That's so yeah. interesting because there's been a ton of coverage on this God of War game, which is why the only reason I knew that one thing, which is that he says "boy" a lot. Yeah. And um, I uh, uh, I had just assumed that the entire thing was like Norse in origin because of all the talk of Norse gods and just kind of like the general focus on war. I feel like that's very Norse mythology compared to Greek mythology. You know what's interesting though is that the you're right because one of the things in that game is that the, the Norse god of war and whose name is Tyr is one of the most revered gods in Norse mm-hmm. mythology mm-hmm. and it's because like He's also kind of the god of peace at the same time because like mm. he like uses war to protect, I mm. think. I don't I don't I don't really understand, but he's like one of the most well loved of all the gods. Well, like cuz the Norse Norse mythology is like like <sighs> old Norse people were like the Vikings, right? Yeah. So they were like all about like fighting and, you know, being fierce and protecting your fucking Mm -hmm. land which i guess also like if you if you do it right and you strike fear in enough hearts and you are fierce enough to protect your land maybe it does lead to peace but i don't know i mean it is an interesting dichotomy to sort of explore i don't know how much it goes into that um i don't know i feel like it does a little bit it's 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 interesting because like it's one of the only games I feel like where this is this is spoilers for like the end of the game kind of, but it's not like huge spoilers where there's a really long gap between like the final boss battle of the game mm-hmm. and the actual like end in the credits where there's not really much fighting you have to do. Mm-hmm. Where like it's really devoted to the story and devoted to like displaying how kratos has changed Mm -hmm. and how he's like opened himself up and even like one of the last things that he says before they finally do spread her ashes is like 
because the the whole game when he was a slave to or like a, a slave to the god of war he had uh chains wrapped around his arm that were like attached to blades that's what he fought with before where there was like part of his imprisonment kind of mm-hmm. um and the whole game he had his arms wrapped up to show that to not have the chain mark showing to hide that from his son mm-hmm. and then like right at the end he unwraps it and just like reveals his arms and says i have nothing more to hide mm-hmm. huh. it's just it's very it's very it's so different than the focus of the other games and it's such a good like it's such a good example of people i feel like people could point to games like god of war in the past as like something that we lose when we like stop being when we like talk speak out against toxic masculinity in our culture mm. it's like oh we, we wouldn't have things like god of war like that game was so fucking dope dude but it's like showing that not only can we have really good games in the same series mm-hmm. like without th- focusing on something entirely different they also i think are made significantly better mm. Because, like, they're they're focusing on the more human aspects of, kind of the more universal aspects of our experience. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah, it's just, a, it's that. just great. Well, I certainly never would have even thought about seeking out watching anybody play any of the old God of War games, based on what you're telling me about them. And if I did, I would have been bored. <clears throat> but yeah. this one, and I also hear the fighting is really cool as well. Yeah, it is. So. It's fun to watch, definitely. I watched Highly Play most of it. Is this a Switch thing? No, it's on the PS4. Okay. You have it? I that? think it's... Yeah. Oh. Is it? Is it only on the PS4? Yeah, it's only on the PS4 right now. Wow, that sounds really neat. Yeah, so it's have you good. played it or just watched Kylie play it? I've just watched Kylie that? play it. I think I might play it myself, though, even though I know the ending. I don't really... I'm a person who doesn't care about spoilers for stuff. Yeah. Well, as we know, Hannah doesn't play a game once she's f- finished it. So, <laughs> does it count, Hannah, if you've watched someone finish it? Um, no, but I I don't think I'll ever play this. I mean, we don't have a PS4 anyway, but I but I'll probably I might seek it out on Twitch see if I can watch some people playing it. Kind of get a, get a taste for it. It's a good one. I don't think we have a PS4. I don't think you do either. I don't think you do either, based on you both not thinking it. <laughs> well, Ian has like a... I would be very surprised if you did. Ian has nope. a couple of gaming systems, but I think they're older. The PS4 is more recent. It must be, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd, Although, know, I'd know if I had that. Kylie sure. and I bought ours sophomore year of college. Yeah, no. So that was two years ago, but it wasn't brand new then. Well, why are they still putting out brand new games for it then? Because there's not a newer one. I mean, there's a, I think there's like a PS4 Pro or something, but it's still a PS4. It's, huh. They haven't released the new generation of systems yet. Weird. At least Sony hasn't. Sony, what's up? What's going on? Sony. Shout out to Sony. <laughs> shout out to Sony. <laughs> I have no reason to give a shout out to Sony. Oh, well, you never used a Sony TV? You I don't know. I wouldn't know that you about You never used the myself. Sony head- headphones? Eh? I, I don't know. Okay. No, yeah, I can't think I of anything else. I'm going to tell you another fun interaction we had after I pulled all that stuff off of Ian's leg, basically waxed the back of his knee. <laughs> he said to me, I'm not going to say thank you. And I said, <laughs> and I said, I'm not going to say sorry. And he said, okay, that seems like a fair trade off. <laughs> that does seem fair. Poor you baby killed me. Man. Um, okay, let's read this email. Yeah. Let's. Because I, heck, I hecked up. Great, great, great segment, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Very cool game. I hear. Indeed. <laughs> I hear. It got like a 10 out of 10 on friggin', friggin' polygon.com. <laughs> okay, Rachel. Shout out to Rachel, wrote us an email. The, the subject line is, in quotes, your brain can't differentiate between blah, blah, blah. So, I'm sorry, Rachel, for what I've done. Yeah, you <laughs> fucked up, Hannah. <laughs> I hate Hannah. 
I hate, I hate Hannah. Hannah. I, I hate, hate Hannah. Hannah. Okay, well, let's set the record straight with our listeners so they can join in on the chants. Okay. Please do not take issue with shout out to Rachel's info. Instead, take issue with Hannah's use of shout out to Rachel's info in an inappropriate context. And there's this tongue sticky outy face. On So Dreamy, we were talking about why a sex dream can affect the real life relationship, as well as why working through your problems in your head can make a difference in your real life, even though the work was in your head life. Your head life. It was a good discussion, as always, but our So Dreamy wisdom doesn't just apply everywhere you stick it willy nilly, you know? <laughs> you burnt. <laughs> Although, Hannah's point does make me think of this study I heard about golfers or some other athletes. Some people in the study imagined practicing, and some people actually practiced, and then they tested who got better. I think the outcome was that everybody got better, but the people who actually practiced got more better Er, That's kind of cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I forget what we were talking about. Oh, paying someone to do yard work versus doing it yourself. Um, anyways, as you all know, our So Dreamy Wisdom probably doesn't apply to paying other people to do some yard work. Oh, yeah. I think paying someone to do the work won't and shouldn't make you feel in your brain like you did it. But you'll still get to feel in your brain that you took some preliminary steps to get that shit done. So good job. That sense of accomplishment is still real because now that work is off your list. Love you all. Shout outs to Rachel. Love you. you. Know, Shout outs to Rachel. And that email reminded me of a, of a baseball thing to bring it back to last week's obsession there are a lot of uh hitters who like really preach the value of visualization during your at bat Mm. like uh wade boggs was one in particular who he was a red sox hitter player like i think in the 80s or 70s or 80s hitter player really really great (laughs) really really great hitter player (laughs) (laughs) won the batting title many times uh and he was a big proponent of like doing a lot of visualization of just you hitting the ball. And I think J.D. Martinez is a current Red Sox player who, and if you watch him have at-bats, like every, b- b- between every pitch, he like steps out of the batter's box, closes, de- closes his eyes, looks down, and takes a really deep breath. And apparently I, I, he said like every pitch he's visualizing himself like hitting the first strike he sees. So... I, there's people say there's value to it. There was an Olympic uh, downhill skier during when the Winter Olympics were on that at the beginning of every run you would watch her and she would be closing I remember her that. eye, closing her eyes with her eyes closed, like visually going <laughs> through the. It looked really funny. Closing her eyes, but, with her uh, eyes closed. <laughs> I saw that people do on the How half do pipe. I saw that too. I remember seeing that on the uh, the half pipe too. Like people, I would people like close their eyes with their eyes closed and then like <laughs> start doing the jumps like in place. <laughs> I just don't know how you guys close your eyes. You're laughing at me. Like, what are you doing when you close your eyes? I you, think that's the point. You're so right. With your freaking eyes closed is how. <laughs> Actually, I think you close your eyes with your eyes open, because if your eyes are already closed, you can't close them again. Yeah. It's like, a it's like have you heard this thing that water isn't wet? Yeah. Because, huh? like, wet implies that... What is it? It's like wet implies that it has water on it. But, like, right. water doesn't have water on it. It's water. Yeah. Well, I think you know that it is wet, Ben. But if you swim with the sharks, you're going to get wet. That's exactly my point. <laughs> and I think Hannah is really getting what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you know, there's that other old saying, water is dry. <laughs> <laughs> if you if water is wet is not wet but you stick your hand in water and your hand gets wet does your water get hand <laughs> shit how can mirrors be real if our eyes aren't real <laughs> If your eyes are already closed, <laughs> close your eyes with your eyes closed. 
not open. <laughs> so obviously all of this applies directly to me paying someone to clear my yard out. The, the width doesn't <laughs> imply necessarily the beginning state rather than the end state. <laughs> anyway. Why yes, you is... thought that imagining something is the same exact. Your brain doesn't know. What you said is your brain doesn't know the difference between doing something and thinking about doing You're something. You're subconscious. Uh... You said your brain. Didn't she say her brain, Ben? <laughs> yes. Well, my brain doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no. So if you think about killing someone right now, do you feel Yo, like you actually arrested. did kill somebody? Hey, do Can you, you guys tell know how to get me out of the country? <laughs> On a plane. <laughs> well, only you and gloves. me are near the coast, so maybe take a boat. <laughs> um, um, maybe water is wetness. Oh! Wow. It's, yeah, I like that. Because, uh, yeah. Okay. So it great itself job. is not wet, but it is wetness. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Hannah. Great one. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Hannah and I are going to write a book, you see. Because <laughs> <laughs> she is the real way with words. I think we're just going to have to call it things that you didn't notice, but we noticed uh. them. <laughs> Colon. Water is wetness. <laughs> By Aaron Hannah Brown. Co- colon cousin. <laughs> colon my cousins. I like. I like that. That's like where if someone had like an MD or a PhD is where it would go. But you guys have cousins. cousins. <laughs> Are colon cousins like bosom buddies? <laughs> exactly like that. Um. Okay. It's homework time. <sighs> it's homework time. <laughs> Arg says pirate Hannah, it's homework time. <laughs> um, if you ever see Crazy Aaron's thinking putty when you're out at a cool toy store or a gift store or a museum gift shop, just grab it, even just a little one, and it'll be a nice thing to play pay with. for it though. Huh? Just Do grab it, walk it. out with pay it in your it. pocket. <laughs> yeah, pay for it. It's free everywhere. <laughs> Skip the country. Pay for it and then take it home. It's non-toxic. Don't throw it at your dog. Or just think about playing with it because your brain can't tell the difference. <laughs> Ba-bam. <laughs> think about paying for it and walk out, am I right? <laughs> the merchant can't tell the difference. <laughs> Aaron, what's your homework? Oh, my Twitter. What's your fucking Twitter I'm up sorry. in here? My Twitter is... This is the first podcast you've ever done. <laughs> I mean, it is. Because you're acting like it. <laughs> um, my Twitter is at Hanthropology. Uh, it's like the study of people with an H at the beginning of it. Um, and not like the story. And a Y at the end of it. Not like the story, yeah. Aaron. Whoa. Great. Okay, well, you know, not everybody listening lives in the Triangle area. If you do, check out... Transplanting Traditions Summer CSA. If you don't, if you burnt, then <laughs> check out local CSAs in your area. I bet there's a farmer that you can throw a stone at and then grab a CSA. Don't and do that. And <laughs> just do the second part. Yeah. My, um, I, you know, it's fresh vegetables and you prepay for it and so you just kind of get all this food and it's great. So you prepay? my Huh? You prepay? You prepay. <laughs> prepay. My Twitter is at Earn Burn. Um, I re- review lesbian movies at Lesbian Movie Reviews on Instagram. Uh, Instagram. Uh. Uh, my homework is to play or watch God of War. Uh, it's a good. <laughs> and while you're watching it, think about why it's good that it's a departure from the other ones. Think about why society sucks sometimes. Yeah. But we can make it better. We can. <laughs> if we're conscious about it. Yeah. And read the um, power. We gotta make an effort, but it's worth it. Because you end it. up with better art at the end. Yeah. A better art. A better art. <laughs> did I say that? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's beautiful. My Twitter is at any disc. Oh, Greg. 
Which I said weird, but... Keep an eye out for Hannah and I's... I think we just committed to three to four bucks. (laughs) (laughs) All with the same title. (laughs) But a different subtitle. (laughs) It's a series. Things that you didn't notice, but we noticed. But no, the first one is things we noticed were bigger. (laughs) That's a subtitle. Things... No, no, no. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Things that are bigger. I'm with you. Than you probably thought. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yep. Colon, but we knew it when we saw them. <laughs> they were bigger. Or something. Right. <coughs> By Aaron and Hannah Brown cousins. Comma. Cousins. Comma. <laughs> Comma cousins. All right. Cool. Well, um, if you want to reach our ear snack, you can. Email us, way too broad at gmail.com. Um, you can join our Facebook group if you search way too broad on Facebook. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at too broad pod, T O O broad pod, and um, tweet at us and stuff, and we'll, um, we'll uh, see those and love them and love you and, and like them. Put the little heart fave, that's what it's called. <laughs> and. <laughs> Also, you could leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, uh, five stars, please. Thanks. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we end. Bye, Narwhals. Have a great week. Bye. See you next week. The podcast candle has been extinguished. Bye. What flavor is it? What flavor is it? <laughs> yeah. Lick it. Woodland. <laughs> Don't eat it. Okay, I just want to put teeth marks in it. <laughs> <laughs>